can be dismissed to your class if you would like this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here today. I believe that I have just something that is burning in my heart. And I pray that by the grace of God and the Holy Ghost to bring this out to us here today. Praise God. I, I'm, I'm going to come back eventually to trying to continue our series and revelations, but not right now. Um, I'm, I'm dealing and really with uh, the next part would be uh, the great harlot. People don't really understand what that means, but we'll talk about that another time. But uh, in the Matthew chapter 15, Matthew 15, look at verse 21. Matthew 15 and 21, and praise God. I love the word. I love God. I love the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 21 of chapter 15 of Matthew. And then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered her and said, It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Look at verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I want to minister a little bit here today in a thought. Crumbs from the table. Crumbs from the table or crumbs from the master's table. Father, I pray, God, for your anointing. God, help us here today. I believe that we have a word that can help us to understand you, Lord, that can help us in our situation, that can help us in our life, that help us in our walk with the Lord. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm asking God, heaven, to open up. And I pray that you would speak through this vessel. I pray that you'd minister to every heart. Pray that you'd revive and strengthen and give people hope here today. And I thank you, Father, giving you honor and glory as I ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated. I have a message. I, if you will hang on with me, if, if, if you will, I don't want to lose you in this, but I, I, when we get toward the three quarters of the way through this and toward the end, it's really going to pull together here. But we see in our text that this woman was in a desperate situation. Her daughter is demon possessed. And so she cries out to Jesus. It seems that everything is against this woman. I mean, she was, uh, was not a Jew. She was a Gentile. Really, she was a pagan. And it seemed that the disciples wanted to brush her off. And when she cried out to Jesus, the Bible said that God was silent, that he would not speak to her. And and that can be pretty discouraging. It seemed that all was against her, but even though all was against her in life and struggles and hardships and difficulties, she did not quit. And she kept pressing on. And before it was over, Jesus said, Oh woman, great is thy faith. Now here is a woman who is in a desperate situation. Let me try to lay a little bit of foundation with this. I mean, she was in a need. She's desperate. Her daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. She's demon possessed and needed help. And the mother probably had done everything that she could do to get her daughter that help. Maybe she went to doctors and physicians and tried different things and prescriptions and things like that, home remedies, but nothing helped. Nobody could help her. It seemed that all was lost and it seemed that she was in a very desperate and hopeless situation and no light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps 
you've been there. Maybe some of you are there right now. You feel that. There's no light. It seems that there's no hope. The devil is telling you to give up. It just seems impossible. You're facing a giant. You're facing a mountain. You're facing a Red Sea, a Jericho wall. And how are you going to get through this? How are you going to manage? How are you going to make it? How are you going to live? How are you going to deal with this enormous circumstance that stands before you? Now, not only that, but can you imagine what the mother must have felt or what she was going through with her daughter to see her own child that was suffering, to see her own child that was living day after day, night after night in torment, to see her own child living in agony, misery, and in pain. It's more than one can comprehend or bear, especially as a parent. Amen. You would rather suffer. Give me. I would rather be sick. I would rather have the disease. I would rather go. Oh, God, please don't let this happen to my child. Don't let this happen to my girl. How many of us have been in a situation like that and you need answers from God, you need help and it might seem that all is lost uh, whether it be a spiritual battle, whether it be a physical uh, a sickness that you're dealing with, uh, whether it be an emotional turmoil, whether it be a fighting depression uh, or oppression, uh, you just need help, you need relief, uh, you just need a miracle in your life from God uh, Amen, we may not always know why we go through the things that we go through uh, we might not always understand the things that God is doing in our lives, uh, but we must know that his ways are higher than in our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts glory to God God knows exactly what he's doing and nothing catches God by surprise and even though some might misunderstand the way that Jesus dealt with this woman we must understand this one thing that Jesus loved her with an everlasting love and he knew exactly what he was doing with her and God knows exactly what he's doing with you hallelujah praise God he knows what he's doing with you, you, your life, this church and ministry, your family, your kids, your husband, your wife. In Matthew 15 and 21, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And, and Jesus probably had left Capernaum and headed toward the border of Tyre and Sidon. And there is a map, it should be, there it is. And I've circled that top area north of Israel where Sidon and, uh, and uh, Tyre, the Phoenician area, Syro Phoenician area is located, is north of Israel. Now these two areas were steeped in heathenistic idol worship. Their gods were Baal and Ashtoreth. And as far as we know, they continued to worship these false gods even up to the time of Christ. And this false worship, listen, it was so bad. It was so evil. It was so demonic that at one time they were even sacrificing their own children to these false gods and burning them and offering up a sacrifice to these heathenistic idols. Now listen to me, my beloved. Satan's mission here is to steal and to kill and to destroy and and that has not changed. Now, how many children are being destroyed by the prince of the power of the air today? By drugs and alcohol and vices and addictions and violent movies and violent video games and immorality and perversion and homosexuality. How many are being destroyed through abortion today? Millions and millions and millions have been murdered in the womb, my beloved. It's sad to say, but in America, a baby is not valued in the womb. My men might have their laws. The government might have their laws. But there's a law that's higher than man's law. There's a law that's higher than any government. There's a law that's higher than any agency. And that is the law of the living almighty God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says thou shalt not kill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baal and Ashtoreth may be dead and gone, but that spirit is still here today. And he's trying to destroy babies made in the image of God. He's trying to destroy children made in the image of God. And we must do all that we can do. Listen, my beloved, to defy the powers of darkness and to reach every child possible for the kingdom of God. And that's why we do all that we can do right here at Word of Life to reach children any way that we can to snatch them out of the hands of the devil that they might live their life for God, live their life for the Lord. Amen. Reach, teach, and keep kids for Christ. Reaching the least, the last, and the lost. And if you're here at this church for any length of time, you'll, you'll feel the heart of God in this. 
You feel the heart of God, that God has strategically placed us in the inner city on the west end of Marion, right in the middle of the mess, right in the middle of the grub, right in the middle of the hardships. God says, I don't want you to walk away from it. I'm going to plant you right in the middle of it to reach children, people for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe that's why we're here. Maybe that's why God put this church here. Maybe that's why God put certain people together here. I love this church. I love this people. I know there's a lot of people love to see this church fold. But why? Why? Why would they want this to fold? Don't, don't they understand the heart and the mission of God? Don't they understand what we're trying to do? Maybe it's jealousy. I don't know. What do they have me to be jealous of? We're in an old building. I mean, we have problems with it all the time. We're, what is going on? Except the enemy hates the fact that we're doing something for God. Oh, church, hallelujah. Now think about this. You know, God made John, remember this, that Jesus loves them. Jesus gave his life for them. He shed his blood to deliver every soul that will accept him by faith and be saved. And it appears that Jesus went to Tyre and Sidon trying to remain hidden. And really, in the book of Mark, it says he went into a house. And more than likely, he's just trying to get some rest. And there are times when you have to pull away from the crowds and get along with God. And maybe times Jesus went off by, many times he went off by himself to a lonely place and he pulled away from the disciples to where it was just him and the Father. The vessel has to be replenished. Not only do we need to be filled, but also we need to be refilled. And if we ever leave the altar of God, we will find ourselves struggling in every single area of our life. Listen, we have to take care of the inner man. You have to replenish the inner man. You have to take care of the spiritual man. Noah put pitch on the inside of the ark as well as the outside. See, let me know what I'm trying to say is this. We can try to save everybody else and to help everyone else. But if we don't take the time to be replenished, then we're actually no good, not only to ourselves, but you're not any good to anybody else. Listen, my beloved, all the works and the knowledge of the world doesn't compare to the oil. What am I saying? You got to have the oil. You got to have God. We must have the oil. The Bible said it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. God will take a vessel, if you will. This is a type of you and I that are filled with the oil, and maybe some of us have about that much, maybe more, maybe less. But God, it's the idea of God to take and use us, to, to fill us with the oil, that that oil might be poured out into others and invest into others, like I talked about in Sunday school here this morning. But I find that when God uses you to pour the oil like the good Samaritan that poured the oil and the one that was dying left on the side of the road, the world had stripped him, robbed him, thieved him, took everything and left him for dead. But God sends a Samaritan. Oh, hallelujah. God sends and uses somebody nobody else thinks that God can use. <laughs> I love it. Hallelujah. Yes. You take that oil and you pour it. And when you pour the oil, not only are they being blessed by the oil that's pouring through you that God's using you, but some of the residue on the oil sticks on the side. Not only is that person being blessed, but you're being blessed also, glory to God, because some of that oil sticks with you as well. Hallelujah. But I'm saying that God wants you to be filled and refilled and replenished. If we don't take the time to pray, if we don't take the time to spend in the Holy Word of God, if we don't take time out of this busy and hectic life to get along with God, we can backslide before we know it. Jesus said, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And in vain, they worship me. And the word vain means hollow. It's like picking up an empty cardboard box. It's light. There's nothing to it. It's hollow. It's empty. It's futile. It's pointless. We must get back to the realization that we can't do anything without Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. There's no substitute for the power of the Holy Ghost. Of all the modern techniques of today, there's no substitute for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can have all the money, all the riches, be the most popular pace on the face of the earth, but if you don't have the oil, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the power, 
power of Almighty God. It's hollow, it's vain, it's empty, it's shallow. Empty rhetoric, it's nothing. There's nothing. Everybody oohs and ahs, but there's nothing there. <laughs> Stick to the notes, Malden. <laughs> either we have them or we don't. Either we're full or we're empty, church. The lamps are either lit or they're going out. We either have the fire or we don't. And may we be people full of God. Maybe we be people full of Jesus, people full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But somehow this woman had heard about Jesus, Matthew 15 and 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out in the same coast and cried unto him. And this woman, she was a Canaanite. She was a Gentile. She was a Greek, and she was a Syrophoenician from that region. And regardless, she was a woman of Canaan. She was an alien from the commonwealth of Israel and a stranger to the covenant of God. Her life was one of idol worship, and she lived in a pagan society. No wonder her daughter was demon-possessed. They worshiped false gods, evil, hideous, hedonistic gods. And her daughter opened herself up to the wickedness that was there, the, the darkness, the immorality, the paganism. And so now she's demon possessed. You love me? I don't understand parents that allow their kids to open their heart up to things of this world. Christians that are not of God. Something happened. People opened their hearts. You raised them up in God. You raised them up in the Lord. But somehow this girl becomes demon possessed. Somehow this mom heard about Jesus. And somehow she heard about the power of God through Christ. And the news of Jesus had traveled. And she knew that this Jesus was different than all the other pagan gods that had no power. I mean, those other gods, they're dry, they're dusty, they're dead. There's no power. They bring no satisfaction. There, there's no fulfillment, no joy, no love, no presence of God, no peace. They can't. It is impossible. They're dead. They're made in the image, uh, in the imaginations of man's mind. They're demented. They're made with the hands and crafted by the hands of man. And maybe she had heard how Jesus had raised the dead and opened up the blinded eyes cleansed the lepers and set those who were captive free maybe she heard about Jesus had delivered those who were demon possessed healed those that were sick whatever the case we know that she heard the gospel was not given to us church to be hidden under a bushel where the light of the world, where the salt of the earth, and this gospel was given to us that others might hear, that others might know that Jesus Christ came to save their soul, that they might know and experience the saving grace of God, that they might taste and see that the Lord is good. You see what I'm saying here today is the church is to be a habitation of God. Hallelujah. We are lively stones, and God is building a holy house, and God desires to express himself through his body, the church. The world should be able to look at the church and see a living Jesus right here in this place right now. Glory to God. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. They should walk off the streets and they should see Christ. They should be able to see the, the, uh, the presence, uh, sense the presence of God, the joy and the love that's in our hearts. Christians that are different, born again, they're not from this world. They're connected to another world and they have the Holy Ghost living inside of them and the love of God flows like the oil anointment through the vessel to touch them. Amen. Matthew back here told me yesterday and he said, I've driven by this church a lot of times. He said, I've always thought I need to try that church out. I need to go. And not long ago, he and Megan came and Matthew said, oh, this is it. This is it. He recognized Something's different here. Oh, hallelujah. He lives right on the street next to us. Hallelujah. Both of them. Hallelujah. This is it. This is where we need to be. This is, what is he saying? He's, he's saying that there's something here. God's doing something. 
And God's alive. He's not dead. He's living. Hallelujah. And I see him in the lives and hearts of people. Amen. The church. But somehow this woman heard that Jesus was in the area. In other words, Jesus was passing by and she wasn't going to miss the opportunity to get to Christ. And sometimes Jesus comes and we miss the opportunity to have a genuine encounter with the Lord. We miss that service. We miss that prayer meeting. We miss that midweek service. We miss that Sunday night. We miss that Bible study. We miss the opportunity to get saved, healed, or baptized in the Holy Ghost. Maybe we're not looking for him. Perhaps we become satisfied or complacent. It's so easy to do. We don't see our need or we don't see our lack. See, the church of Ephesus left their love for Christ. Laodiceans were lukewarm and Sardis was alive and name only. The Bible says that she cried unto him and it tells us that this, this woman was desperate. She had come to receive something of the Lord and she wasn't leaving without getting that which she was asking for. We see her desperation. We see her determination. The word cry means that she, she clamored. It means to speak with, with great emotion. Jesus! I need your help. I, I can't make it. I can't live. I can't do it anymore. My life is a mess. I'm miserable. My daughter's possessed. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, help me. Amen. It's the idea. The Holy Ghost is showing us the desperation of this woman's heart. And most of the time, it's not until we're in a crisis or desperate situation that we cry to God in that capacity. And, and sometimes our prayers can be surfacy or superficial or empty rhetoric. It can happen to the best of people. But the Bible clearly tells us the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. There's power in prayer. Prayer works. God hears the cry of his saints. Amen. Where one puts a thousand to flight, two put 10,000 to flight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now hear this here today. True Bible faith will not be denied. True Bible faith, God will hear. God will answer. And there's a, always an urgency about faith which produces an emotion in the soul of the individual who comes to God. Blind Bartimaeus, he cried, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They tried to shut him up, but he cried all the more. And it was there that he received of God, the woman who had an issue of blood, 12 years bleeding, anemic, weak, uh, uh, low on hemoglobins. Uh, uh, but yet she pressed through the crowd. Jesus, listen, she knew Jesus was passing by. He might not come here before. I need a touch. I got to get to God. I need need crime in a crisis nobody can help me and there she touched the hem of his garment and received from God received from heaven answered prayer we see the woman who was coming to the unjust judge and she was driving him crazy because of her adversary. She would cry out to him until finally he answered that cry. This woman cried out to Jesus saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. But then in verse 23 it says, but he answered her not a word. Jesus was silent. He didn't say a word. You could hear a pin drop. There are times when we're crying out to God and God is silent. Heaven is silent. Do you know what I'm talking about? You need an answer. I need direction. I need guidance. I need the Lord. I need help. And you cry out to God. You pray. Heaven is silent. God is silent. I'm hearing nothing. I don't know what to do. Well, if you don't know what to do and God isn't saying anything, stay put. Amen. <laughs> Just wait. There's a reason, there's a purpose in this. Can you imagine? It's one of you coming up to me and saying, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, can I talk to you? And I just turned my back like I didn't hear you. Can you imagine what would happen? First of all, you would explode. How dare he do that to me? There's a sense of pride. Don't you know who I am? How could he do that? And you would be going around, everybody telling everybody what Pastor Mark did, and the whole county would know before this afternoon at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to paint this, this picture for you. He, he didn't answer her anything, not a word. He just ignored her. He acted like she wasn't even there. 
Jesus was silent, and, and there, there are times, now, listen, it's not easy, and it's, it's a test of our faith when we cry out to God in prayer, and the Lord is silent, and there's going to be times in our journey where God is silent. There will be silent times in our journey, but even when God is silent, there is purpose in what God is doing in that. In other words, in the silent times, can you trust him, or will you trust him? You see, everything Jesus did, even down to the words he spoke, were guided and directed by the Holy Ghost. Jesus was not putting this woman off. What was he doing? What was the purpose? It wasn't to deny her request, but rather that he might, that she might receive what she had asked for. <laughs> All right. He didn't, he did not answer her so that she might receive what she is asking for. What was Jesus doing? He was drawing her closer to himself. He was strengthening her faith. There will be times when the Lord may not answer us right away in order that he might draw us nearer to him. As the Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Uh, take a step towards God. Take a step of faith. Move towards God. Uh, put the situation between you and God and God will take a step towards you. Uh, my beloved friend, if the Lord doesn't answer us immediately, then keep seeking God. Keep asking. Uh, keep knocking on heaven's door. Keep believing God. Don't stop bringing your petition before the Lord. Now the phrase and cried unto him means that she kept crying. She wouldn't stop. She wouldn't give up. She was determined. She was persistent. She wouldn't take no for an answer. It's God or it's over. I have to have a word from heaven. I need Jesus. And maybe you know what I'm talking about because you're there right now. Now, not only did Jesus not answer her request. I don't know how I got this far without a handkerchief, but anyway, we did. Not only did he not answer her request, but right away, but it seemed that the disciples wanted to get rid of her. And verse 23, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she cries out after us. Can you imagine? I mean, really what they were saying is that this woman is driving us crazy. Jesus enters this house uh, trying to get alone, uh, trying to get some rest. Uh, and this woman comes pleading, begging, crying, pleading, and she won't quit. She won't give up. And the disciples said, look, Jesus, we're tired of her. Send her away. And then that's a picture of a lot of churches today. Just send her away. <sighs> and it appeared that she did not have much going for her. That Jesus wouldn't give her the time of day. She's crying out over and over for hell, but Jesus doesn't answer her. It appears he's ignoring this desperate woman. And now the disciples want to get rid of her because she's bothering them. But notice this she still doesn't quit. She doesn't walk away. She doesn't give up. She doesn't throw in the towel. No, 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 no. Notice what happens. Jesus said that he was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's another blow, if you will. I mean, she's not a Jew. She's a Gentile. But that doesn't stop her from crying out to Jesus instead of giving up, instead of running away, instead of quitting. Now she comes to Jesus, and now she worships him. And the gospel of Mark, it says she falls to his feet and she worships God and she pleads for help as she is worshiping the Lord and we see the continual persistence and the determination of this woman she was crying out to Jesus and now she is worshiping him and there is a difference because there are people that just want something out of God give me bread make my life comfortable help my marriage but they're not willing to surrender to God they're not willing to, to, to completely surrender their lives and their heart unto the Lord and accept them as their Lord and Savior before she's asking before she's crying out to Jesus but now God had not answered he said listen but when he did I've come to Israel not to the Gentiles it's not my time and then she bows she worships him and she says God I need your help and now she's worshiping him and Jesus has drawn her and, and Jesus said it's not good now listen to this it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs 
Now, Jesus just lost his church. You understand? You, you got to get this now. He just lost his church. Most people would walk right out the service and quit. We're done. I've had it. We're not trying this anymore. We give up. Nobody's going to call me a dog. Nobody. But Jesus was not degrading her. He was revealing to her what she was. And before we can be saved, we have to admit what we are. Oh God, I'm undone. I'm lost. I'm a sinner. Gee, Isaiah said, woe is me for I'm undone and I'm a man of unclean lips. Jacob admitted that he was a cheat, a liar, a supplanter. I'm no good. One cannot be saved until they at first admit what they are. I'm lost. I'm undone. I'm a sinner. I'm a liar. I'm a cheat. Now I need saving from my sins. I need a savior. Now, now we're getting somewhere. People say, oh, but that's negative preaching. No, 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 that's right preaching. Well, I don't like that. You make me feel bad. You make me feel convicted. It's got to get bad before it gets better. You got to know what you are. Listen, my beloved, all of us deserve hell. I hate to tell you that. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to make you mad. But I'm going to tell you the Bible truth. Every one of us deserve hell. There's nothing good in us that would merit heaven at all. But thank God for the almighty blood of Jesus Christ. It's not our goodness. Our goodness is as filthy rags. We have no righteousness of our own. Oh, but thank God for the blood. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. But before you get saved, you got to know what you are. Hmm. This Syrophoenician woman still doesn't quit. She didn't leave the church. Disciples don't want her there. Deacons don't want her there. You get it? Have you ever come to a church and you don't feel welcome? You ever walked in a place and you don't feel welcome? You ever walked in a house? You don't feel welcome? And that's how it was. She walked in there, Mike, and, and she didn't feel welcome. And she said, that don't matter. I don't care what people say. I don't care what deacons do. I don't care what the preacher says. I'm staying. Sorry, sister. <laughs> I'm not moving. I'm not budging. My daughter's demon possessed. I can't live like this anymore. I can't do this. I can't go on like this. I've got to have an answer. I've got to have God. I don't care whether the church likes me or not. Doesn't matter if they try to shut me up or not. Doesn't matter if they try to kick me out or not. I need Jesus. I need an answer. I need God. I need the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the heart of this woman. The Syrophoenician woman, she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The crumbs, the, the leftovers, the things that people don't want, the things we sweep up and throw into the trash. Uh, crumbs. From the master's table with my wife's permission <laughs> now I want you to get this it's not good to give the bread to the children she says yes sir I know but I'll eat of the crumbs the dogs eat what's left over the crumbs the things that we think are worthless the things we think we don't need and what she was saying, and she was admitting, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm a dog. Yes, God, I'm a sinner. Yes, God, I, I know what I am. I'm trash. And so she comes in to Jesus. Jesus had said, and she says, yeah, Lord, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And what we're beginning to see is her brokenness. We're seeing her humility. And she had come to the place in her life where she had said basically, yes, master, I know. I don't need the bread. I don't need the stuff you're going to give to Israel. I'll take the leftovers. I'll take the crumbs. 
because the crumbs are good enough for me as long as I can have something of you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. In other words, I, I'm not leaving here without you, Jesus. I'm not leaving here without you, Lord. I, I've got to have you. And if it's the crumbs, then the crumbs are okay with me. If it's just the little pieces that fall to the ground that are left for the dogs, that's okay with me as long as I have you, as long as I have the Lord, as long as I have Christ, as long as I have Jesus. Crumbs are okay with me. I don't have to have the best, the most expensive of everything. The crumbs are all right with me as long as I have Christ, as long as I have God, as long as I have the Lord, as long as I have your touch, crumbs are okay with me, Master. They're okay with me. If you don't understand, maybe you do. I want you to get this picture. The reason why we're not getting answered prayer filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason why we're missing out on Christ is because we as the church are no longer willing to get low enough and humble enough and broken enough and be satisfied with the crumbs that are left for the dogs. I'm too proudful, I'm too prideful. I deserve better than this. I can hear it today. I'll never stoop that low. I'll never be humiliated like that. I, I sat here yesterday and my wife says, she's sitting with Brother Tim and she says, what you preaching on? I said, I'm preaching on the Syrophoenician woman. It's different this time. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, his crumbs that fall from the master's table. And I begin to share with her a little bit about it. And both of us begin to cry. Right here, just begin to weep before the Lord of understanding the, the brokenness that it takes to get something of God. You don't order God around. You don't dictate God. I get low, I get down. <laughs> I want, the crumbs are okay with me, Lord, as long as I have you. Yes. Now, now we're not done yet. Dear Lord, you, you got to give me a few more minutes. We're not done yet. It's the only way to come to God. And, and she saw what she was and, and she knew what she, she was undone in, in, in her filth and, and she admitted what she was and she knew that she needed a savior, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And, and do you know what I find that this woman did? She wouldn't take no for an answer because I see her determination, her willingness, her desperation, her persistence, but also she did this. And this is amazing. I never saw this before, but what she did and what she was doing is that she constrained the Lord. This is, you don't want to, this is better than a hot dog just hold on she constrained the Lord in other words she wouldn't let him go I have to have Jesus I must have an answer wouldn't it be good for Christians to get back to the place where they don't let him go for believers to have the attitude and determination that we must have Jesus like Moses who wanted to see the glory of God what Jesus did he wanted to do he had this thing all set up he's God he's in control but he knew what he was doing the entire time he was drawing her to himself and she went from crying out to worshiping to admitting what she was with a broken and humble heart. Most of the time we'd give up. I'm done. I'm insulted. But Jesus sees what others cannot see and Jesus speaks the truth about us just like he did with the seven churches of Revelation. He sees with the right perspective, everything looks good on the outside, but not everything is good on the inside. Jesus knows the difference. He sees the heart and the motive. You see, I believe that Jesus wanted her to do this. I believe this was all set up. He wanted her to constrain him. 
Jesus knew what she would do, but she didn't know what she would do. Jesus may do things that we don't understand or we misunderstand with the hopes of us constraining him. You see, Jacob was in a desperate situation. He saw his brother was coming with 400 men, and the last time they met or were together, it wasn't good. And so Jacob, we find, got alone with God, and he wrestled with the angel of the Lord. Really, it was God. It was a theophany. But the angel of the Lord said this, let me go for the day breaks and Jacob said I'll not let you go you see that's what God wanted he wanted Jacob to constrain him if you've been married for any length of time sometimes when your wife says yes it means no when she says no it means yes <laughs> and so what we find here is that God did not want Jacob to let him go it was a test of his faith will you hold on God says, let me go. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He constrained him. I won't give up. I won't quit asking. I won't stop holding on until you bless me. And, and there's where God blessed Jacob. First, the test, then the blessing. Abraham, the sacrifice of his son. First the test, then the blessing. You see, we need some Jacobs today that are desperate. Jacobs that are persistent and determined. We need some Jacobs that are willing to constrain the Lord, that, that are determined to not let Jesus go. I remember when I first got saved and, and uh, I gloriously saved the presence of God, bathed me for six weeks. I, I'd get up in the morning, the presence of God all through the day. I felt the presence of God. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I felt the presence of God everywhere that I went until about six weeks was up. And I woke up one morning and I didn't feel the presence of God. I thought, oh no, Brother Bill. I said, what happened? Is there sin in my life? God, are you angry with me? What's happened? I don't sense your presence. Listen, I thought I was going to go crazy. And so I got up and I went in the living room. I begin to pray and I begin to seek God and I begin to worship the Lord and after a little time finally the presence of God was coming back and I can feel the Lord I said okay everything's going to be alright but looking back on that I know what God was doing he was teaching me to seek him he wanted me to constrain him he wanted me to worship him amen to come to God God was showing me amen that I got to pray I got to seek the Lord I got to wait on God I need to constrain him don't let go God, I don't want you to leave. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. I think uh, the two men on the road to Emmaus and Jesus had been crucified and they were walking away from Jerusalem, the holy city of God. Hopes and dreams were shattered. They were down, discouraged. But here comes Jesus, but they don't know that it was Jesus. And so Jesus begins to expound to them about himself in the Old Testament. Verse 27 of Luke 24, and beginning at Jesus, all the prophets, he expounded to them all the, in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And he was showing them Jesus throughout the Old Testament. But as they drew near to the town, Jesus indicated that he would have gone farther. And I've preached that before, where Jesus would indicate that he wants to take us farther. But I saw something I never saw before. So what they're saying, in other words, Jesus was going to keep going. Like they're walking along and they're talking. And so they stop in Emmaus and Jesus just keeps on going. And so they look at Jesus and, and verse 29 and, and, uh, and, and in other words Jesus uh, was going and keep going but then in verse 29 it says but they what they constrained him they constrained him in other words uh, Jesus kept going they stopped but they said this they invited Jesus to stay with them in other words Jesus don't go don't leave stay here hallelujah you see it wasn't uh, until Jesus broke bread and their eyes were opened and they recognized who he was they recognized God in communion and fellowship and intimacy with Christ. Their eyes were open to see the Lord as he was. Hallelujah. But they constrained him. Don't leave. There might have been times that Jesus is present and, and he's just walking right on by. And many times we either don't take notice, we're too busy, or we just let him go. One all along the way, Jesus was hoping that somebody 
but talk him into staying. I don't know how many churches gathered here in the world today. How many places is Jesus? I can just imagine. Hold on. I'd go outside and do this, but I'll just go back here. Okay? Amen. I mean, can you imagine? Okay, so I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm outside, okay? And, you, and, and I walk in. And now I'm not Jesus, but I'm Jesus, okay? And I'm walking through the people, the congregations, the churches, the Christians. And some don't recognize him. Some don't see him. Some don't take notice. Some do, but they're too busy. They're too busy. They're too busy. They got other things to do. I got things to do. I wish the service would hurry up and get over. I got things to do. Laundry, shopping, this and that. Jesus is just walking through. The presence of God is here. You see? Some don't notice. Some don't see. Some do. Don't have time. The presence of God is here. But then some do. And Jesus is walking by and he's hoping, he's taking his time, he's hoping somebody would say, Jesus, I want you to stay. So Jesus begins to, to, to walk out of the church. He's walking out. The presence of God is beginning to lift. Most in the, right there were done, but then Jesus is hoping He went to his own hometown. They wouldn't have him. He went to his own people. Jesus, I pray he doesn't come to his own people. And they ignore him and don't want him. Nobody wants to be ignored. Do you like being ignored? Do you like feeling unwelcome? Jesus says you're a dog. She says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat of the master's, the crumbs that fall off the master's table. That's okay for me. That's okay. I'll take it. As long as I can have you, Lord. (laughs) And Jesus says to her, you have great faith. He used it twice in the Bible. (laughs) Both of them were Gentiles. (laughs) One was the satirious soldier. (laughs) And one was this woman, (laughs) the Syrophoenician outcast, (laughs) pagan, no good. (laughs) You understand? (laughs) And he said, that your prayers are answered as you wish. I'm paraphrasing. And her daughter was healed that very same hour. I can imagine the mom, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe she embraced him, hugged him, kissed him. I don't kiss his feet. I don't know. I sure would be. <laughs> I'd be like, can you imagine the, the peace that the, the burden lifted, and and she, and and she went home, and she's walking home, and I'm sure she's trying to get her composure and just thinking about all this, and I imagine emotionally she is just whipped, and she walks in the house, and she sees her daughter whole, and in her right mind, <laughs> healed. I'm finished by saying this. 
I don't know about you, but the crumbs are okay for me. You want something of God? You got to have Him first. And to have Him, you got to get down where the crumbs are. Let's, let's stand together, please. is open this altar is open the Lord has spoken the Holy Spirit has spoken would you get low enough would you come Lord I humble myself to you I pour myself out to you the crumbs are okay <laughs> they're good they're just fine with me Crumbs look good. I just want Jesus. I just want the Lord. Would you come? Would you, would you come as our, was just said in prophecy, would you come and spend time with the Lord? Would you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need Jesus. Come. Come to him, all you that labor heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my pride away. Take self out. God, I just want the Lord. Don't leave, Lord. I'll constrain you. Hallelujah. 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 God, don't leave. That's it. God, I want you. I don't want you to leave. I don't want you to leave. You, you understand what I'm saying? What the Lord is trying to speak to the church. I just, I, my life, my, my heart, my all, I give it all to you. Don't leave, Lord. I want the fellowship with you. 
I want to commune with you. I want to spend time with you in your presence. I want the Lord. I just want Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to love you all over again. I want to love you all over again. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I can't make it without you. I'm desperate. I'm facing a mountain, a giant, a Goliath, God. I need you. Help me, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not giving up. I'm believing. I'm trusting God. I'm living for the Lord. Crumbs are okay with me. As long as I have Jesus, as long as I have the Lord, I'm okay. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, touch us. Humble us, Lord. We come broken to you. Contrite, I need Christ. I just want the Lord. I just want God. I want to spend time with the Lord. Hallelujah time with Christ come unto Jesus you're not coming to a church not coming to me you're coming to Christ I'm making a, a, a decision of stepping out by faith to come and to pray and to commune with my Lord hallelujah hallelujah Oh God, oh God, I'll eat the crumbs. I'll eat the crumbs. I'll do it. It's okay. And I'll do it gladly as long as I have Jesus, as long as I have the Lord. I know what I am. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. Oh, God, touch my sister, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Your touch, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, don't leave, Lord. Don't leave. I need you. Don't don't go, Lord. Stay, stay, Jesus. Stay, Lord. Stay. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Commune with God, fellowship with the Lord, worship Him and praise Him. And just say, God, don't, don't go, don't leave. I want your presence. Amen. Jacob said, I won't let you go. I won't let you go till you bless me. I, I need the Lord. I need God. I need your presence. I need a refilling. I need to answer prayer. I need to be revived and renewed. God, change me. Uh, amen. I know what I am. I admit what I am. Crumbs are okay for me that come off the master's table. I'll eat the crumbs. I'll take it, Lord. Hallelujah. It's okay. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Touch your Lord, Jesus, Jesus, have your way, Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, help us. I just want Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, my Lord. God wanted her to constrain him. That's why he did what he did. <laughs> God is so good. He's amazing. We think he's ignoring us. We misunderstand him. We don't know what he's doing. Thinks he doesn't love us. Thinks he doesn't care. 
And all along the way, we were being tested to see if we would hold on to God and ask him not to leave. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The test. my friend father and the power of your spirit touch him lord god we need you oh lord please apply the blood of jesus christ over him lord minister to his needs please oh god i ask in the name of jesus our savior hallelujah hallelujah Praise the Lord. Meet me here again. Oh Lord. Praise God. Jesus, hallelujah. Lord God, will you meet me here again, oh Lord? It's all I want. Will you meet me here again, oh Lord? Would you just commune with God right now? Just commune with the Lord. Worship Him, love Him, adore Him. Meet me here again. This place, the Lord is in this place, oh Lord. Holy Spirit is awakened. The Lord is in this place, yes. The Lord is in this place, oh Lord. Amen. Forsaken, the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place, oh Lord. Amen. It was I forsaken the Lord is in this place the Lord is in this place 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Before we leave, would you, all of you, be willing to come up front and pray with me? Just come out of your seat and come up here in the front and just to the the very front. I just want to draw us closer to each other. Hallelujah. Come on in, it's okay. Come on in closer to each other. Hallelujah. Feel the presence of the Lord here today in a unity of God. We are to protect the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We have to protect this and be careful not to distract or to hinder the unity of the Spirit of God. You don't have to be a member here for for me to say this, but I, I say this because the Lord has poured into my heart such a love for you. I love you more than you know. I care about you. I care about your life. I care about your spiritual life. I care about your family. I care about your children. God can put a love in my heart. I care about the body of Christ. I want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. God is teaching us. God is showing us things in the scriptures. Maybe he might be doing right now in your life. Maybe this answered some questions. Maybe the Lord is just trying to get us low enough, humble enough, broken enough to where he can touch you, to where he can answer your prayer. Maybe God is just trying to get us to the place of communion with him. God, don't leave. I want to spend time with you in your presence. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear your word. I want to walk with you and you expound the scriptures to me. I I want more of Christ. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about you having a true, authentic, genuine relationship with Christ. Knowing God, learning the Lord. In, in our Bible study with the college and career, we're talking about learning the voice of God, understanding His voice and how He speaks to our hearts, how He leads, how He guides, making sure it is of the Lord. God wants to teach us. God, I believe, wants you to succeed spiritually, prosper spiritually, reviving, renewing, an abundant flow of his spirit, an abundant life, an overflowing life in Christ. That's what God wants. Many things can try to take that away from you, the devil, the world, the flesh, many things. But God wants to work amazing things in you. He does. I want you to know, church, I love you and I thank you. I just want to thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your friendship. So Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, I I thank you, God, for this service. I thank you, God, for the opportunity to minister the word of the Lord and God, how you are revealing and showing things to us perhaps we've never seen before. 
And I pray, God, that you would put it in every one of our hearts to hunger for Christ, to come to the place to say that the crumbs are okay with me as long as I have God, as long as I have the Lord. So, God, I pray that you would bless bless my brothers and my sisters in Christ. They are your children. Touch them, God. Help them, Lord. Guide them, Lord. Oh, Father, I pray you'd fill them with your Holy Spirit and you will strengthen them. And I pray, God, that those that are facing walls and giants and mountains and rivers and oceans, oh, God, that you would help them, that you would answer their cry, that you would meet that need in their life, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Because, God, we need your strength. God, we cannot make it without you. Oh, God, I pray for your blessing, your hand, your presence upon every single person. God, have your hand upon them, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we need you. Put it in our hearts. Put it in our hearts. Jesus, I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay. I want the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless them. Protect the body. Protect the church. Protect us from ravenous wolves. Protect us from deception. Protect us from division. Protect us from doing our own will in the flesh. Help us, Lord, to be led of the Spirit and to walk in your power. I pray. Lord, the homes, fill it with your presence. The people on their jobs, in their car, when they go to the grocery store, the presence of God is with them. Lord, touch them. Almighty God, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. If you're watching on camera live, pray God to touch you, bless you. Um, wherever you are, you can come to Christ. You can humble yourself to the Lord and say, God, I need you. I'm a sinner. I'm lost and I'm undone. I'm like that Syrophoenician woman and I need your grace and I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. I repent and I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my heart right now. That Just ask him, come into my heart, Lord, to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I want to live for you, and I come by faith, and I receive and accept you by faith. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, washing me, cleansing me. Thank you for giving me new life. You can pray something like this. God will save you. Hallelujah. The Lord is here, church. Presence of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Go to one another and embrace each other and just say, I love you. I appreciate you. Go to brothers and sisters in Christ and say, God bless you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. It's okay. Might feel a little awkward doing that, but that's, if you don't want to, that's all right. I love you. We have service at 6.30 tonight. Come, let's worship the Lord in this place. Let's worship God in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us live. I pray this service was a blessing to you. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God.